Hey, it's Jessica Namasa with WTF Health. I'm here at Giant Health, and joining me right now, I have the Shafster, he calls himself now, Dr. Shafi Ahmed. He is a surgeon, and he is the co-founder and chair for the Giant Health event. So, Shafi, always a pleasure to talk to you. How are you? I'm good. A bit tired. It's been exhausting two days, but a great conference. As you can see behind us, is still carrying on yes. uh, with a whole fem tech kind of session going on. But it's been a wonderful two days. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. All right, so I want to talk a little bit about Giant. And you and I cross paths at a number of these health innovation conferences, which is wonderful. It's one of the best parts about it. But um, I want you to tell me about why Giant is different. How is this conversation here that's happening in London? Um, why, is this, why is it different than the other conferences that are out there? So we set up Giant about three years ago. And Giant stands for Global Innovation and New Technologies in Healthcare. And so what we set out to do was bring the right people together to have the conversations, be a little bit edgy, but bring the right stakeholders uh, in the right environment to be able to have those wonderful conversations, how tech and healthcare become converged, how we can impact it on a global scale um, um, with lots of different people interacting. And what we've got here is 123 startups who have applied for our Beanstalk competition. Six to five are here talking about their products. Young people, energetic, enthusiastic about new cases. I want to stop you there real quick yes. and just add, one of the things I really like about how this conference is, now it's in Stamford Bridge, which is the home of the Chelsea Football yes. Club, and it's a unique venue, and so with the startups, they're kind of like scattered around, but you have to walk through them, yes. which is so engaging, yes. I love that. They're not cordoned off in some exhibit hall that you have to walk through. I mean, they're very much integrated into the flow of the traffic pattern of the event, which I think is a nice touch. I I'm really glad you said that. We thought about that. So we thought they should be the most important people in the whole kind of uh, ecosystem of innovation. They're often at the back, behind somewhere. We have right. to go find and you them. Find them in the startup alley. Yeah, you have which to. Which really sounds intimidating. Like you're going to get beat up in the startup alley. Uh, <laughs> if you're an investor, you probably feel that way once you walk through it. I'm going to imagine. So we made sure that everybody walks through them first and foremost, see what they have to offer. And yeah, and there's a stage right in between mm -hmm. the kind of uh, startup section. So look, we're really happy that they are part of our journey with an integral part of what we're trying to achieve. It's like creating, as I said before, the ecosystem of innovators, entrepreneurs, startups, um, investors. Government. Government, we've had government here, of course, today. Policy makers, and having that kind of energy with the right people to make the right decisions and just having the connections and networking so that all of us can feel uh, enabled and, and perhaps um, and, and that we can all feel that we can transform healthcare with the right partners. It is very accessible here. Like if I were to give like the atmosphere award, it's like very buzzy and very accessible. Like you can really run into a lot of people just by walking around. And I, I think that that's um, something that's often overlooked when people are putting together um, health innovation conferences. There's usually like a main stage and like hundreds of rows of seats. But this is very good as far as like kind of helping create those more serendipitous interactions that lead to all that good stuff that we want, right, in innovation. Oh, thank you for saying that. That's what we've thought we'd try to achieve and I think we've achieved it to at least to a certain extent. Yeah. I'm very happy. Um, I'm getting a lot of good feedback from people. It's been now three years since this kind of vision for Giant and I think we've just turned the corner. I think we've got the right traction, the right number of people, the right, um, the right kind of companies coming to us and the right sort of individuals who have come to the conference to learn uh, about health tech and innovation. So I'm really pleased that we've got stage where I think it's been really successful and it's established itself as probably the premier tech health innovation event in the UK. I'm excited to see what happens moving forward with this too. And I mean, I think the content was interesting. There was, I, I talked to Barry Shire, the founder, um, co-founder as well, about um, some of the content and how it was curated. And I'm, I'm curious to know too, from your perspective, I mean, you personally have a lot going on. And one of the things I love about just the whole Shafi ethos, if we can call it that, is that you are very open and you're very easy to access and people can stop you and talk to you. And I like, you have that vibe here at the conference. And you also have this vibe in some of the things that you're working on professionally. So, I mean, I know you've just, um, the the uh, broadcast for, for Channel 5, I believe it was, of your surgery, your live surgery on like national broadcast just aired, which is phenomenal because this is unprecedented. And I mean, you're doing other things um, like that, the um, the hospital in Bolivia with Martin Dockweiler. Um, it's fully digital health. It's so, it's going to be so accessible. It's looking to bring in people. And then even like your early work, I mean, Snapchatting a surgery. I mean, from, from one thing to the other, all of this is about democratizing. Um, 
um, healthcare and really making the physician and the practice of medicine very accessible to the rest of us. I mean, whether we're in the industry um, working or if we're out of the industry as patients, why is this such a, like, I mean, this is like the undercurrent of everything Shafi, I've analyzed it. So why is that? What is the passion behind this? Explain this to me. <laughs> so thanks for the analysis. Uh, uh, no problem. <laughs> I, 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 I hope you've, in actually some, in some ways, I'm glad you've done that because you're the first person who's looked for a thread of my work. Oh, thank you. Um, <laughs> and um, they're not disparate. I think you're right. There is a, a core belief that underlies all of those principles. And I think I know what it is. Um, I think what it is, I think it's about, it's about um, sharing knowledge. It's about impact, leaving a legacy. So I think what it is, is I as an individual may just be one person out of 7.5 billion on the planet. Hey, what can that one person do to maximize the opportunity to either teach people, train people, look after people in healthcare, or connect with people? So how does that one individual rise above the natural aspiration that people have and do just so much more. I think whether you connect people with Snapchat, teaching two million people, Google Glass, virtual reality, build a digital hospital which will impact 13 million people, and health tech conferences that allow the ecosystem to grow, it's you as a person, how you can, how you can um, do more than you ever thought was possible. And that's what I've been trying to push all along. You're such a sharer. I mean, that was the first thing you said was about sharing. And I'm like, oh my God, that's it. It's like, it's sharing. Yeah, I am. Like, my thoughts are always have always been um, over the last 25 years and longer as a kind of, as a human being on this planet, I've acquired knowledge and skills. And that's just taken time. Hours of work, um, both day and night, etc. So the thing that I think is most precious to all of us, it's not the money, it's not the wealth, uh, it's about the knowledge and the skill sets. That's all that we have. When we pass away from this planet, which we all do at some point, what are we going to be remembered for? Are we going to be remembered for the money that we have or the legacy that we leave behind? And is it going to be a case of can I share my experiences, both good and bad, making mistakes along the way, to as many people as possible? And so all these kind of platforms, technology, allow you to do that, sharing your experiences, both good and bad, success and failure, to the maximum number of people. So you can say, my knowledge, my hard work, my experiences have been worthwhile, because I left that conversation and that uh, knowledge base to many people, and hopefully it will benefit them, hopefully it will improve them, because we start off in life struggling. It's hard. We had no technology in the, when I was growing up, for example. We weren't particularly affluent. We struggled in society to make it a living and then become a doctor and move on. So how do you inspire the next generation to have it easier than you? I don't want people to go through our hardship. I don't want anybody to experience what we went through in the 70s and 80s, growing up in the UK, for example. So all the stuff that I've done is showing, actually, you can do this. You don't have to be difficult. Uh, it can be easy for you and navigate this kind of uh, chaotic life that we have to be able to be successful. I think that's the kind of message that I'm trying to portray uh, and that might be at a, uh, in my subconscious, uh, but I think it's no, there I as a thread. It. I see the thread. I mean, I really do. And I think there, there really is, you know, a method behind the madness. And <laughs> well, I mean, and I was going to ask you this because I think one of the things you said that just kind of struck me is that, you know, you, sh you share your successes and your failures and it's true. And I feel like, I mean, especially for a, a surgeon, I mean, a lot of times, I mean, the rest of us, it's like, oh, the surgeon, like, we don't know what he's doing. We have no idea. And you're so open with that. But I know that in the profession, there's a lot of hesitation. I mean, even with like artists sometimes or innovators, like, oh, my, the app's not ready yet. I'm not ready to share. Or why would I let somebody watch a surgery? What if they critique me? Or, you know, why would I let somebody, you know, see this right now? It's not done yet. You know, and we kind of like, I think all of us, you know, kind of start to self-criticize. What would your advice be to people in order to kind of have the courage to put it out there, good or bad? So I think you're right. I think you have to be courageous. You have to be brave. And um, That's hard in healthcare. I think you're right, um, but I think as a surgeon, um, one of the things that we have to be is extremely brave. It's tough. Surgery is not easy. Things go wrong. You have to have quite a strong heart and be bold and be courageous. So that's part of who we are. But I think we're now in a place where they need healthcare needs people like me um, to push that boundary, to ask the right question, 
We're scared of asking the right question. Take an example. Last week I did a live operation on live TV, uh, on Channel 5, on British TV for the first time, for the public. Now you might say, well, you know what, the public's not ready for this, uh, the public may not understand this, and they're going to they're gonna hate this, we get a lot of criticism. I had more faith in the public. I said, no, no, let's do this, let's do it in a sensible way that's safe, um, that reduces risk as fast as possible. We asked the question. The response was one million viewers of a live operation on TV. 1.7 million people on Twitter talking about the operation in live, in, in, uh, in, live in, in real time. So we asked the question. The public have given you the answer. 99% of people sent supportive messages saying how great healthcare is, how great surgery is, thank you for doing this. So I just don't think we push it hard enough. I think we get comfortable. I think we're very paternalistic to our patient population. We assume what they will know. Oh no, this is best for you. We know what's best for you. Do we really know that question? We don't. We have social media now. We have the internet we're connected. Ask them the questions. They will tell you. If they criticize heavily, you know you've got it wrong, it's not the right time. So I think we've got to figure that out, feel our way through this kind of new world that we live in. Uh, and actually, I think you get surprised by the outcome. So I just say to people, be brave, be courageous, push that boundary, uh, mitigate risk. And you know what? You'd be surprised how successful you're going to be. Shafi, I love it. The Shafster with the brilliance. It will hit the Shafster. Well, you said it. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing your insight. No, I mean, I think it's interesting to hear, you know, from somebody who's got just so much on the go all the time, but, sure. but hear about that kind of common thread that's kind of the undercurrent behind sure. all of this. So thank you for joining us. Pleasure. Shafi, Giant was incredible. Thank you so Thank much you. for having me Thank here. It was coming. a pleasure. This is Jessica Damasa with WTF Health here with Shafi Ahmed at Giant Health, enjoying the very, very end of it. Thanks so much.